Greetings viewers and welcome back to my channel. I'm Benjamin Michael Tanner and today I'm going to be giving you guys some tips on how to draw dinosaurs. Whether it's a real animal from a fossil record or if it's a completely new one that you made up yourself. Which is something that I like to do myself sometimes. Well the first step you take when it comes to making a completely new dinosaur from scratch is what clade or family you want to put it in. Whether if it's a clade or a family that already exists in the fossil record, or if it's one you completely made up yourself using paleontological research as inspiration. The second thing you need to know about drawing a dinosaur is how to make the silhouette and the posture. And the method I tend to use most of the time, and I think it's a method that's used by pretty much every other paleo artist alive, is that you always look at the skeleton. When you go to a museum and you look at the skeleton of the dinosaur on display, you get a great sense of what a dinosaur actually looked like in real life, and you get a great idea on how to give the animal a more accurate look, if you wish. Or, if you want to make your dinosaurs more retro in appearance, like Charles R. Knight, you can just use your imagination and give them a more erect stance with their tails being dragged across the ground. Or if you fancy the art of Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins, who happens to be my favorite historical paleo artist, you can look at modern reptiles like lizards or crocodiles. Second step is what kind of detail you give your dinosaur. Now, you can use inspiration from anywhere. Like, you can use the, the uh, sexual display sacks of a modern bird. You can use the uh, scales of a crocodile. You can give your dinosaur horns, huge claws, long necks, small heads, sailbacks, tail spikes. Pretty much you can use anything you want for your dinosaurs. It all comes down to knowledge and imagination. And the last step is what kind of colors you give your dinosaurs. Now, colors are something new that's starting to come to light in the field of paleontology. Scientists are finding evidence of pigmentations within well-preserved fossils, such as Sinusoropteryx, or Microraptor, or even the Ankylosaur, Borea lapelta. However, as fascinating as it is to find evidence of what colors dinosaurs actually were, we don't have very much of it. As far as fossils go, color pigmentations are extremely rare. So, that when it comes to colors, this is where you can just let your imagination run wild. The colors you choose to make your dinosaurs are completely up to you. You can use anything you want. Like, you can use the stripes of a tiger, or you can use the spots of a snow leopard for something like a Dakota Raptor or an Allosaurus, or maybe you could even use the color patterns of a coral snake or a Burmese python for something like an Edmontosaurus or an Alberta Ceratops. This is something that you don't need to rely on scientific evidence for. You can just go crazy with it. This is the main detail I think is the most fun to do because, as I've said, it doesn't require anything. You can just use anything that inspires you. Now see, this is just one of the main points of drawing. Like, some people draw pictures because it makes them feel good, like say they've had a hard day at work and they just want to do something to, to blow off steam, or other times people do it to express themselves. See, drawing isn't just about putting what's in your imagination down on a piece of paper, it's what you feel in your heart and soul. Drawing a picture is like telling a story with design. An entirely new world you can create through vision. Your possibilities are endless. 
but your greatest tool is your imagination. And sometimes research helps too, but in the end, it is your passion that will make you and your art great. I hope you guys found my tips useful, and starting this week, the real work begins. I'm looking forward to showing you guys what I can do. Cheers.